Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for being so obedient right off the start and coming to your seats. My name is John Palfrey, and on behalf of the Harvard Law School, just delighted to welcome you here uh, to the first public meeting of the Internet Safety Technical Task Force. Um, we have been convened over the course of the, much of the course of the year, uh, by 49 state attorneys general through a joint statement that they entered into with um, MySpace and others. We have been joined over the course of the year by about 30 wonderful companies, NGOs, others who care about the safety of children to work on this uh, topic and we're delighted to have a point in the process where we're able to welcome the public into our work um, and to show off some of the technologies that we have been assessing. So uh, the uh, run of show for today is that we have um, solicited over the course of the summer for anybody who has a technical solution to help kids uh, stay safe online. We received about 41 submissions over the course of the uh, formal process and of those we have selected about 15 who will be presenting to you today. That's a lot of companies and a lot of technologies to take in. Um, I beg of you, uh, those who are presenting, to keep uh, to the uh, few minutes that we've asked you to present in so that there will be time for questions um, with each presentation. Um, and I will be a harsh taskmaster, I'm sorry to say, as we go through uh, the course of the day to get us out of here by five. Wanted to say also, um, concurrently, we've uh, invited anyone who submitted those who are presenting and those who are not to set up uh, a poster session out to the side. Um, as well as a chance to show off technologies. And we hope many of you concurrently um, or otherwise will take advantage of the generosity of these uh, presenters in uh, setting up a poster session uh, off to the left. Uh, so I wanted, to, uh, before we uh, began with our technical presentations over the course of the day, um, to welcome two extraordinary public servants who are at the heart of this effort. We have the great pleasure of welcoming both our Attorney General, Martha Coakley, um, and the Attorney General of Connecticut, Richard Blumenthal, um, who have joined us here today out of extraordinarily busy schedules during campaign season, no less, um, and uh, to help give us some of the context for why they took this unusual approach of not using a regulatory process, but rather a collaborative process with some of the key social networks in the space and key technologists and even some crazy academics like us um, to see what we could do by working together to see if we can um, keep kids safer online. Um, so uh, without anything further from me, I'd like to welcome um, an extraordinary public servant, our uh, Attorney General Martha Coakley, um, to uh, give us some opening remarks. Thank you very much, John. One of my favorite crazy academics, as a matter of fact. Um, I am going first only because I have the home court advantage. Um, but I am delighted to be here with my colleague, uh, Dick Blumenthal, and he's going to have a chance to speak to you also. Uh, when I became an attorney general almost two years ago, one of the things I quickly realized is that among my colleagues, there were two tremendous leaders in this field that I cared so much about because I had so much to do with it as a district attorney in Massachusetts, including Cambridge, uh, and a quarter of the state. I had spent a lot of time uh, investigating and prosecuting cases uh, where children were victims, uh, and it became clear to me through the course of the 90s that we had a whole new frontier to worry about, not just uh, the guy in the raincoat uh, in the schoolyard who could go after children, or the father or boyfriend uh, who had physical uh, custody of a child, but now we had a frontier where um, there was absolutely almost unlimited ability for predators to reach out to children, uh, and frankly very little risk of being caught, being identified, uh, and it created enormous challenges for us on the front lines, uh, for all of you who are here today, and um, when I became uh, Attorney General again two years ago, uh, there was already a tremendous amount of work being done uh, by A.G. Blumenthal's office, uh, by other AGs, including AG Cooper, and I know someone from his office is here today, uh, for some of the staff at the AG's office in Massachusetts. Um, and I think we all realized what a tremendously challenging problem this was. And I will say that the fact that we are here today talking about this in this forum, as John referenced, I think is an incredible um, salute to the common sense and the goodwill and the collaboration of everybody to get the right result. Uh, would that we had one-tenth or one-hundredth of this relating to what's happening on Wall Street, for instance, we'd be way ahead of the game. Uh, but I think we saw the wisdom of trying to address this as a problem uh, and figure out what was the best way to get a good result for the people we serve. 
um, and we appreciate um, that you all have uh, contributed to that, particularly here today, but in an ongoing effort to get cooperation and good results for what we're looking for. Um, when 50 attorneys general, 49, 50, uh, formed this coalition, we uh, worked particularly around the social networking sites, and we quickly recognized that there were going to be technical issues that would require solutions, particularly around age verification, uh, and implementing design and functionality safeguards to protect minors uh, on sites. We had seen, for instance, from our own work in this field that regardless of what uh, a particular site might say or not say, um, children still had access to, and, and more importantly, predators still had access to an unlimited range of contacts. We saw the results of those contacts in terms of solicitations, in terms of unwanted material, including pornography, and in fact, uh, we saw um, contacts that occurred off-site as a result of online sites that resulted in um, child abuse and sexual assaults and physical assaults. The key uh, principles around uh, what the joint statement involved talked about developing the online safety tools, the design and functionality changes, which we are quite interested in, educational and other tools for parents, educators, and children, and law enforcement cooperation. Uh, and the leadership in the industry uh, acknowledging that these were important goals, I think, was key. And it was a crucial turning point in our negotiations to make sure that we were here today working on the solutions we are instead of being involved in legal or paralegal squabbles over where we should go. And so the fact that this piece today and the public offering of it uh, is occurring here in Harvard and in uh, my old county seat in Massachusetts is a matter of great pride to me. Uh, and I appreciate that we are able to continue to work with you to get some results, not just to congratulate ourselves that we've been able to reach the joint statement, but by undertaking a comprehensive assessment of all the technologies available. We expect that the Internet Safety Technical Task Force will offer recommendations on the technologies that can be used to develop age and identity verification tools for social networking sites and indeed for the Internet as a whole. I look forward to receiving your, your uh, recommendations in the next few months and how we have as a task force proceeded. And most importantly, I welcome you here to Cambridge today and I thank you for your work. John. General Coakley, thank you and thank you to your staff. Scott Schaefer and others have been extraordinary to work with and we're very grateful for the leadership you've shown and your office has as well. Um, now, to introduce Attorney General Richard Blumenthal, as uh, General Coakley mentioned, this is one of the nation's leaders on this topic, someone who has, during his tenure as uh, Attorney General in Connecticut, really been one of the outspoken leaders um, to protect kids online. And he's going to give us uh, a slightly broader statement about his goals for this task force um, and a charge for today. General Blumenthal. Thank you very much. First, let, let me thank uh, John Palfrey and the Berkman Center and all of the staff there for the great work that they have been doing on this very difficult and challenging and crucially important issue. And I want to thank General Coakley for her leadership from the very first day that she was in office. She was a national leader on this issue of internet safety and has devoted a great deal of time and attention and great creativity to it. And I want to thank members of our staff who will be here throughout the course of the day and hopefully in contact with you as well. Uh, Anthony Janata of my staff, an Assistant Attorney General in Connecticut, and Jay Chowdhury of North Carolina, Roy Cooper's Chief Assistant on this effort, and uh, of course Scott Schaefer, all of them have done great work. Uh, Roy Cooper and I have co-chaired this task force of attorneys general, and he could not be here today, but he will be following, I'm sure, very closely the results of these deliberations and the report that will be produced. As I was coming here this morning, walking through, through the square, I had one of those flashbacks. I'm sure you've had them, an exam or a paper that is due tomorrow and you haven't started it yet. Uh, I was an undergraduate here many, many years ago and I had one of those flashes and then could calmly reassure myself that I didn't have to produce anything at the end of the day. 
but John Palfrey does, uh, at least at the end of the year. And as much as we may be sharing ideas and being creative today, we want a product from this task force. It's not an academic exercise, forgive the term. It is very goal-oriented. Uh, the attorneys general established this task force because we want better means to protect children. It's really about as simple as that, to increase the level of internet safety. Many of you who have talked with us know the passion that we bring to this issue, and it is a passion that has united attorneys general as I've never seen before in 18 years in my office. Other than the tobacco effort, which Connecticut also helped lead, there has been no other multi-state task force that has attracted so much support and interest as this one. And I want to really very sincerely thank MySpace, which was the first to reach a historic agreement with us as attorneys general that led to this task force, as well as Facebook, which became the second to reach an agreement with us. And the MySpace initiative in putting together this task force, I think, has been critically important. And so I thank them as well as uh, the Berkman Center. The task force, I understand, is now becoming, rather than the MySpace task force, the Berkman Center task force, which I think is a good thing because uh, we have tremendous trust and reliance on the Berkman Center and on John and, and his staff. You know, we realize, and you know, there's no magic bullet here. There's no panacea that will bring internet safety to parents who are deeply concerned and who will raise the subject of internet safety in almost any forum where we as elected officials go. Part of our passion, quite honestly, is the result of that grassroots feeling on the part of parents and citizens and law enforcement officials. This issue is very much a law enforcement challenge. And another part of the passion that we bring to this issue comes from our local and state police who are deeply concern about the lack of age and identity authentication and verification because it leads to opportunities for child predators. MySpace has taken the initiative in eliminating about 50,000 child predators who have established profiles in their own names. Child predators who are registered in the state go online using their own names, having been convicted of a felony involving criminal sexual assault. And of course, as we've said again and again, for all of those 50,000, there are a lot more that don't use their real names. The anonymity of the internet is one of the great threats that law enforcement sees to apprehending and also preventing criminal assaults. So, we have a, a very direct interest in our law enforcement role, as well as parents. I'm the father of four children, ages 22, 19, 16, and 14. Roy Cooper has young children. Many others do. We see this problem very personally and closely as citizens and parents, as well as law enforcement officials. I am tremendously excited about these 41 submissions and about the 15 presentations that we're going to see today. But even more, I'm excited about the dynamic effort that's involved here. John was telling me that some of the submitters contacted him after a few months after their initial submission and say, 
could we update what we gave you? This whole area, the new technologies, I think are obviously, you know better than I, a work in progress. And what's exciting is the focus and the work being done. We don't expect to have a magic or final product, a final solution on December 31. But this task force, I think, has stimulated a lot of progress, and I think we'll have a very, very positive result. And this process that has brought us to a point on the trajectory, I think, will go on, and we hope to continue to support and encourage that progress. Ultimately, of course, the goal is not only to enable better law enforcement, but also to empower parents. We've said this again and again and again and again. When we're asked, how can you possibly replace parents as a source of responsibility? No. The objective is not to replace parents, not to in any way substitute for them or absolve them of responsibility, is in fact to enable them to be more responsible and to empower them. And of course, to bring a greater measure of accountability to the social networking sites and to the issue of internet safety. Accountability is the antidote to the de dangers of anonymity. And whether it's holding schools accountable, holding parents accountable, all who should be held accountable, we hope to, to do. So I think that this task force's work is really going to be very profoundly significant to the state attorneys general, to our constituents, to the parents of our country. And I want to thank all of you for participating, for your contributions here today, and for the, the product, for participating in the product that eventually we will have that is so important. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Blumenthal. And um, we have about 10 minutes until our presentations begin. Um, and General Blumenthal and Coakley have kindly uh, agreed to take a few questions. If uh, anyone would like to ask them, just a reminder, this is totally recorded, completely on the record, streaming as we speak. So um, just as, a, as fair warning. Um, uh, but uh, they'd be delighted to take a few questions. And maybe at about 10.28 or so, if the Aristotle team might start making their way, way up, we'll, uh, we'll get, get started at 10.30. So maybe take any questions for. I'm only here in case General Blumenthal needs a lawyer. Does his he? Questions. I see. Oh, good. Excellent. Well, he, he's got a fabulous one. A local lawyer, in fact. Someone who knows That's the Cambridge right. scene well. I can't believe, after having led this task force for eight months, that there would be nobody we, standing we have, up to have, have anything uh, to say. We have put everyone to sleep. No, I don't believe it. I Poor don't people. believe it. Yes, please. <laughs> Do you mind coming to a mic, or can I give you one? And you, and you have a right to remain silent. Yeah. <laughs> Though being accountable and saying who you are would be great. I'm James Carmichael from Southern California. I represent ChatSafe. Um, something you said earlier, are you going, going to have representatives that we can speak to later uh, during the course of the session and into the afternoon? Why don't uh, Tony J. Scott, if you could just stand up so uh, people know who you are. Thank you, and they're, that was they're your, they're uh, your hostages. Absolutely, Tony Janata of Connecticut, Jay Chowdhury of uh, North Carolina, and Scott Schaefer of Massachusetts. Extraordinary uh, assistant. Hi, I'm Kevin Trilly. Uh, Cert ID is the company. I just had a question about you're bringing the the U.S. perspective, obviously, to this, but yet we all know the internet's a very global forum. And just how does that fit into your thinking with other countries in the world that are looking at this, or just as the solutions that are proposed how they can work, you know, within the U.S., without the U.S., and, you know, how is that criteria going to affect kind of how you look at this? Uh, well, I'll, I'll attempt an answer, and then if General Coakley wants to uh, give a better answer, uh, probably she will. You know, obviously there are global ramifications, and we are not an island. It's a little bit like, uh, forgive me for oversimplifying, the uh, financial crisis. 
you know, we can't deal with the whole world's recession or the whole world's credit seize up. We have to deal with what's happening in this country, even though we are inextricably linked in the financial world as we are in the internet world with other countries. But we can set a model. And that's partly what we're doing in the financial area. We're setting a model of, hopefully, uh, a new system that works better than the old, as well as a temporary bailout. And we are very focused on what can be done with new technologies to authenticate age and identity or impose other safety measures that will protect children and stop inappropriate content in a way that can set a model for the whole world. And, you know, again, at the risk of seeming much too simplistic, Roy Cooper and I have both said, and I'm sure infuriated many of you when we said it, that if we can put a man on the moon, we can make the internet safer. And I think this task force, in a way, is living proof of it because you've made such progress. Those 41 submissions, and there are others that are not in the book, partly because folks didn't want to make them public right now, I think attest to the progress that we can make moving on. So we need to set a model for the whole world, in my view, even though we can't impose on the rest of the world these solutions. We can set standards, and we can raise the bar. I agree with Dick. I think that's the, the, the right answer. And I had a little bit of time to think while he was answering. But it seems to me that we've done that and we do that in other areas. The most obvious parallel is what we're trying to do to protect uh, online identity theft. We know that there's a lot of uh, rings in Eastern Europe, for instance, that trade in uh, information both from here and around the world. Well, we're maybe not going to be able to go after them, but we can make those transactions safer and we can give tools to consumers to make sure that their own information is protected. We should do a better job of keeping lead paint out of China, for instance, and so if we up, we're not going to stop what happens in China around those toys, but we do have things we can do around the borders and what we do to protect what comes into the country, both literally and on the, online. And so the technology is there to do it, and I think um, you keep in mind what we're trying to accomplish is a global in communication network, but we, we um, see it as a challenge, certainly, but not an overwhelming one. And I think that Dick is exactly right. It's the technology that we're talking about now that will let us focus on keeping people who use it safe as opposed to wor worrying about what else is out there. If I might just respond on behalf also of the Berkman Center Task Force and how we've approached this um, in consultation with the Attorneys General, we've adopted sort of a concentric circles approach here, which is, as um, General Blumenthal mentioned, he's most focused on identity authentication tools as the technology solution that we need to answer to. But we also came back and said, look, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the technology space, maybe more broadly even, identity on the internet or some of the other ideas we've heard about. So we've drawn a broader circle around that. Likewise, we've heard that social networks are their area of primary interest and that, you know, the, the joint statement makes that plain. On the other hand, we've said, you know, some of the research shows that in instant messaging or chat is where a lot of issues are happening. So we've drawn a broader circle around social networks to say the internet. The same is true with national and international. We came back and said, you know, plainly this is, these are state attorneys general covering the United States, but um, we have some international participants. Bebo, for instance, is on the task force. Um, and we've also recognized that, you know, this is a problem you can't just border around the U.S. So again, the broader concentric circle has international in it. So your, uh, your concern has been noted and uh, concerned. So I'm going to do two more questions. Wendy Seltzer of the Berkman Center and then John Morris, and then we'll let you off the hook if that's okay. Thank you. Wendy. Thanks. Uh, so I, I hear a lot about keeping children safe uh, while using social networking tools. And one of the ways that it seems that these tools help children to uh, make themselves safer is by giving them outlets for information where they can find things that their families or their local communities might disapprove of to learn information from their peers uh, and from other trusted sources uh, for which even children at times need anonymity and need privacy. Uh, how, does, how do we strike that balance, particularly as we uh, hear some government pressure through cooperation to, to close down on uh, anonymous channels? How do we keep enough room for 
uh, anonymity that children and adults can explore? Well, you know, uh, anonymity has its place even in a world of full disclosure. And we live pretty much in a world of full disclosure or much greater disclosure than I can ever remember and than I've ever read about. Ultimately, everything becomes public in the, the world we inhabit, seemingly anyway, these days. But there is certainly a place for anonymity when it comes to personal advice. Uh, you know, even in the law, there are privileges against testifying. There are confidentiality protections for documents. And even when it comes to the government, there are protections for certain kinds of national security secrets. On the internet, I think there, there is a role for anonymity, but it ought to be constrained or at least limited to accommodate the safety concerns that have been raised. Right, right now, uh, it seems very much like Times Square, where everyone moving around is anonymous, and that's the analogy that is frequently drawn. And I think what we want is perhaps some greater accountability where it can play a role in effective protection of children. And also, not, not only is it anonymity, but it's actually outright falsehood. If somebody says he is 17 and he's actually 37, there ought to be a way to stop it or stop that prevarication, misrepresentation, before it has damages. If a child says she is 11, if a child says she is 17 or 18 and she's actually 11, there ought to be some way to, to check that. Same with, obviously, identity, false identity. So I don't think that accountability necessarily is always adverse to anonymity where it's appropriate, but the, the role of anonymity is a limited one. I think that's a fair question to ask, and I think that that discussion is going to continue as we have this new marketplace. I hear in the question the concern about First Amendment and freedom of expression, and that, that's always been the discussion. That's always how it gets framed, as it should be. And so I think, and I know the attorneys general agree with me, is that uh, we're not trying to tamp down on that. People may disagree where those lines get drawn, and that's why we continue to have the conversation. Uh, but that discussion about the marketplace of ideas in this particular marketplace will continue. And so we have a job to do. We are advocates for safety. Uh, we know what the, the limits um, may be or should be. Uh, and uh, it's just a much bigger marketplace, and we're going to continue to have that discussion, I think. Yeah. John Morris, another uh, question. J j just one. Ver uh, John asked me to be very, very short, so just I'll do it one sentence. Um, do, do you anticipate taking recommendations from this task force and attempting to implement them through mandatory le legislation in, at the state level? Well, legislation, regulation, regulation of social networks at the state level. Well, that's, a, that's a very good question. Uh, and, and let me try to be brief. First of all, you know, the idea of regulation, as General Coakley just said, I think is one that is kind of a last resort to us. Governmental intervention or regulation or dictates from the government is, is really not a goal here. In fact, the whole purpose of the task force and of our agreements, first with MySpace and then with Facebook and perhaps with others eventually, is to achieve voluntary solutions. You know, a lot of what we're doing here is simply enforcing the rules that, the rules of service or the rules of participation that the sites themselves have, and we want them to be enforced. So we see ourselves as partners, and to answer your question, I don't envision these recommendations as being the basis for legislation. If they work, my assumption is, they'll be adopted without regulation. Regulation is sort of the sword of Damocles that hangs over all of us. And by us, I mean we as well, because, you know, when there's a regulation or a law, we got to enforce it. And as we've seen all too often, 
laws are only as good as they can be enforced. And there are a lot of laws that are not enforced, which I think undermines the credibility and structure of our entire legal system. So my hope is the recommendations will be credible and sound and will be adopted voluntarily, not by governmental fiat. All right, that is, that's great, concise statements. General Blumenthal, General Coakley, thank you so much for your leadership and for being here today. Thank you.